But I want you to remember that when you read in the paper that, that physicists at CERN have, uh, if they announce they've discovered something which looks like what theorists tell them might be supersymmetry, what they're really discovering is quantum dimensions of space time. It will be correct to say then, in fact, it would be incorrect not to say that we don't live in ordinary space time, but we live in superspace. The fact that you don't <coughs> are aware of these extra dimensions begs the question how are you aware of the ordinary dimensions? Space time, I remind you, is a mental construct. You don't feel space time. You don't see space time. You have, as an infant, somehow, miraculously, while your brain was developing, constructed a model of physical reality that placed it in space and in time. But it's only a model constructed by biologic us. And <coughs> we've already modified that model quite a lot with relativity, special and general. And we might have to modify it with, with quantum dimensions. And that's the stakes involved, the LHC. Or, but what the final framework is, we don't know. And what picks out a theory that we could test experimentally, we don't know. What we do know is that when you start working in this framework, the issues of space-time and the nature of space-time are challenged in ways that go way beyond imagining quantum dimensions. You know, the very essence of the way you learned as an infant to picture space-time as a smooth structure, uh, a fixed topology, and certainly a fixed number of dimensions. All of these features fade. You can tear space-time smoothly in string theory. You can change the topology smoothly. You can change a number of dimensions smoothly. And we're, the way this is sometimes put, most of us believe, is that space-time should be thought of as an emergent phenomenon, another emergent concept. It's a crude approximation of physical reality, pretty good for large distances and times, but microscopically, or in certain circumstances, like black holes, you shouldn't, you're going to have to modify what you think of space time. And of course, gravity is dynamical space time, Einstein taught us. Gravity also can be thought of as an emergent. Um, emergent from what? Well, we have examples using these different ways of representing physical phenomena, sometimes in terms of strings and gravity, sometimes in terms of more ordinary quantum mechanical systems. But there are very special examples, and they don't involve usually emergent time. And we don't really know what the rules of physics could possibly be if space and time especially is a truly emergent concept that you don't start with. How do you even formulate the rules of physics, which is supposed to be about predicting the future? 